It's a bad time to be a number one seed in the NBA with both one seeds losing. We've got series being evened. Now we're going to preview Thursday's games. Michael Bolton. Let's get to it. To it. Let's get to it indeed. You are locked on fantasy basketball. Your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is also brought to you by Rock Auto. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit RockAuto.com and tell them Locked On sent you. Wow, NBA playoffs. Um... Imagine the Milwaukee Bucks and the Los Angeles Lakers both losing to the Magic and the Portland Trailblazers. Weird stuff going on. I'm recording this today uh, after the first two games of Wednesday. The Raptors go up 2-0 against the Nets. I think they'll win that 4-0 now um, because Joe Harris isn't going to be there for the next three games. And then the Utah Jazz absolutely throttled the Nuggets to ha- to even that series one game apiece. And Philadelphia, Boston has just started. We're going to talk here about Thursday's games, though. So let's get into the first one of those games on Thursday. And that is the Miami Heat, who had a big win over the Pacers in game one. They are taking on, so unsurprisingly, the Indiana Pacers. In this one, we're going to look at uh, FanDuel pricing here to start things off. Miami is four and a half point favorites, and the total is 215. Now, Victor Oladipo suffered an eye injury in game one. He didn't return after nine minutes. He's listed as questionable. While for Miami, Jay Crowder had an ankle problem. He is also listed as questionable. They're the two injury concerns in this game. Of course, no DeMontis Sabonis. For uh, Miami, Kendrick Nunn, DNPCD. I talked about how I didn't think that he'd be their starting point guard. I thought they might go with Tyler Hero. In fact, they just said, why don't we just play our best point guard the majority of those minutes? And that was Goran Dragic. And that will continue to happen because, guys, Nunn is not that good. He's just he's just not. He's going to come third in the rookie of the year. He's not that good. Uh, and I don't think I don't expect him to play in this one. For the Pacers, uh, Brogdon's at 7,400. It's not a bad play. I don't think it's overly exciting. Uh, especially against his heat defense, but I do love Dragic at 6,200. He's jumped up 500 bucks. I don't think it's enough. I think he is still absolutely a point guard we want to look at. Aaron Holiday has been absolutely putrid. He's an under 4,000. He's a GPP guy, but if Oladipo, Warren, and Brogdon are all out there, he just isn't going to get the opportunity. So probably if Victor is out, I'd look at as, but otherwise probably not. TJ McConnell, not really. Oladipo's at 5,600. What an absolute turd that was from him last game. Six points in nine minutes. Um, $500 price drop which is good when that happens because of an injury. If he plays, 5,600, I think, looks really strong. Well, Jim Butler at 8,100. Because he's my butler. <laughs> yeah, he was he was excellent. I don't really see the Pacers having anyone to stop him at this point. He should be 40 minimum, so he looks to be a massively strong play. The Spur Dunk Robinson is not the greatest DFS option. While Andre Iguodala played a lot of minutes, he didn't do anything with them. In fact, he had uh, 11 points in 25 minutes, so he's not the guy for us. While Tyler Hero at 4,600. Where's the oh, where's my button for hero? Oh, it's gone. Doesn't matter. You can imagine. Oh, no, there it is. There goes my hero. He played 34 minutes in game one. He had 26 points, and at 4600, it's okay. But look, I just don't really trust him to be bringing back 25s, 26s consistently. Small four, Jay Crowder at 42, no interest. Justin Holiday, 37, no interest either. Tony Warren Jr. is at 7700. He had 46 in game one, which is a good result. I, I'm i still not sure 77 is the right price for Warren, and I would not be investing heavily. Samson, Jones, McDermott, no. Power forwards, uh, you got Bam Bam out of bio at $8,000. Looks really strong to me. I think he's a 40-point minimum here, 45, 50-point upside. Really like him quite a bit. And then at center, you've got Miles Turner at 6,200. Has struggled against Bam in the past. He's probably not a high upside guy here. Uh, I'd rather get other centers in. Kelly Linick at 3,600 could be the guy to watch because if Jay Crowder does miss, then a Linick could step in. On DraftKings, it's similar. Uh, Dragic at 59 looks great. I love Adebayo there. Less interested in Oladipo, more interested in Brogdon, and still massively in on Jimmy Butler over on DraftKings for this game. 
Next up, it's the Thunder and the Rockets. The Rockets with a big win in game one. No Russell Westbrook again. No Luke Marmute and no Lou Dort for the Thunder. The Rockets are only two and a half point favorites here and the total is 227 at point guard. Chris Paul's at 8,200. I think he's an absolute lock to get that number almost every game. He had 48 in game one. No reason for me to doubt him again here. While Austin Rivers at 3,700 is not the plug. At 5,300 for a shooting guard, Dennis Schroeder. Now he was... Um, some might say shithouse in game one with just 10 points in 32 minutes. That's a $400 price drop. That is your opportunity, I think, to get back onto Schroeder. He can give you 30 really comfortably at 5,300. Jimmy Harden's at 11,800. He only had 52 in game one. I thought he still played pretty well, but 52 is not quite going to cut it at almost 12,000. I think he can do better than that. While Gildas Alexander at 66, not really appealing to me. Benny McLemore, no thank you. MC Hamadou Diallo, Terrence Ferguson, Andre Robertson, just a plethora of putrid for those guys who will replace Lou Dort. At small forward it is, the Italian cock, Danilo Gallinari. Hands off my cock! Gallinari was one of my better guys to look at in game one, and it absolutely came true. 39 points at 6,500. The minutes were up. Now, that price has jumped up by $1,300, so that takes some of the appeal away from Gallo, but I still like him. Dan House, no thank you. Eric Gordon at 49 is a GPP option, and Darius Basley just not probably going to play enough to really make that impact. Bob Covington's at 6,700. I'd like that salary to come down to closer to six before I consider using him. Jeff Green at 51. No. My name is Jeff. Uh, I liked him in yesterday's game as well, and that panned out pretty well. At 5,100 with no Russell Westbrook, they're playing green a lot. I actually think that's pretty good value there. At center, PJ Tucker actually had a decent game for once. 22 points at 4,200, though. Price rise, uh, no thank you. And Steven Adams at 5,900 had 33 against the Rockets, which is a good return. I just don't put a huge amount of faith in him doing that consistently. Start your morning with the news that matters in just 10 minutes. Axios today hosts Nyla Boodoo and a team of award-winning journalists will bring you the latest analysis and insight into the trends shaping our world. If you want to shape your world in terms of auto repair, rockauto.com is the place that you need to go. Why would you go to your local auto retailer where the guy behind the counter, he doesn't have all the parts in stock. It's literally impossible because no store is that big because there are so many makes and models of cars. He has to go. He has to go on his computer, clickly, 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 Search up the part, order it, and then tell you uh, three to four weeks. Cool. Why don't you just do that yourself? RockAuto.com. RockAuto.com is a family business serving auto parts customers online for 20 years. Go to RockAuto.com to shop for auto and body parts from hundreds of manufacturers. And if I wasn't so mechanically inept, I'd be fixing my own car from RockAuto.com for sure. RockAuto.com catalog is unique. It's remarkably easy easy to navigate. And best of all, the prices at rockauto.com are always reliably low, and they're the same for professionals and do-it-yourselfers. Why spend up to twice as much for the same parts? Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right, locked on in their How Did You Hear About Us box so that they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. All right, um... Probably should have given you the DraftKings options on uh, on that game as well, but let's do that now. Now, Covington is down to 6,000 on DraftKings. That makes him a GPP guy. Love Harden at 11.7. Schroeder. Uh, Gallinari, again, the price has gone up, but I still think there's some value in him. Chris Paul looks strong too. And Gildas Alexander is moving into a GPP option over there. Uh, Jeff Green at 4,800 still has that base. It's pretty similar, uh, I think, across both sites here. Let's flick it over. Next game up is the Orlando Magic and the Milwaukee Bucks. The Bucks, well, Vegas doesn't think that it's any different here because they've actually made the spread larger. It was 12 last game. It's 12 and a half now. The total is 227 and a half, and Aaron Gordon is still listed as questionable for Orlando. Surely, Milwaukee comes out and absolutely beats the poo out of him in this one. That would be my expectation. Eric Bledsoe's at 5,900. Cash, fine. Tournaments, no. While Markel Fultzy Fultz at 5,500. Similar. I like his cash value. He could be a 40-point guy. There's no doubt about that, but I'm not really confident in it. I think he's more of a 27, 28-point player here. George Hill played a lot in game one, really taking the minutes away from the big ragu. 28 minutes, 27 minutes, 28 points for Hill at 4,200. I don't really trust that being a regular occurrence. While DJ Augustin at 4,700, it's not bad play. He's getting some minutes there alongside Fultz, and he's shooting pretty well. At shooting guard, Milton's at $7,000. Disappointing game one. He's better than this. I think there's a real bounce back coming for him. I like it. Terry Ross at 53 looks pretty strong to me as well. While DiVincenzo, Matthews, Corva, Awundu, they're all no's. Fournier was an absolute turd in game one. 5,100. 
He has given the Bucks some problems in the past. So I think that he is absolutely a bounce back guy to have a look at here. Probably more for tournaments though than anything. While Yanni, unto the Kumpo, or sorry. Giannis and um, He's at 11 3. Love it. I prefer him over Harden personally in this slate. Really love him there. Jimmy Ennis is at 4,300. If no, Aaron Gordon, that looks like a real strong lock to me. At power four, Big Azar is at 6,600. Aaron Gordon, I think his minutes will be limited coming over from the hammy, so that's going to be a no. And then at center, Big Nikola Vucevic had 56 points in the opener. He's really bloody good. And I think he's a 40-point minimum player here. Bucks have given up big numbers to centers all year. Love him there. While Brook Lopez at 5,500 stunk it up in game one. To 16 points, but he played 30 minutes. Now, historically, he hasn't done that well against Vooch. The Bucks have been pretty good, or the Bucks, the Magic have been pretty good at limiting opposing centers. So I'm not overly falling over myself here to get Brook Lopez into a uh, lineup. On DraftKings, Fultz at 45 looks a, a real steal, as does Bledsoe at 53, and Fournier at 51. Middleton and Yanni, real strong as well. Vooch, they've bumped up to 88, so that takes some of the value away from him, or Jimmy Ennis at 4,000 could be an absolute steal over on DraftKings uh, on that one. Guys, you want food. I want food. We love food. What the hell else is there to do when we're stuck inside our house? But sometimes you just don't want to leave. So why don't you download DoorDash? That is the thing to get the food that you want directly delivered to your door. DoorDash is the app. It brings the food you're craving right now right to your door and ordering is easy. Open the DoorDash app, choose what you want to eat, and your food will be left safely outside your door with a new contactless delivery drop-off setting. With over 300,000 partners in the US, Puerto Rico, Canada, and Australia, you can support your local go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Chipotle, Wendy's, and the Cheesecake Factory. I'm still waiting for the Cheesecake Factory to hit me up and send me a key lime cheesecake. Many of your favorite local restaurants are still open for delivery. Just open the DoorDash app, select your favorite local restaurant, and your food will be left at your door. The deliveries are now contactless to keep the communities that they operate in safe. Right now, our listeners can get five bucks off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code LOCKEDONNBA. That's right, $5 off, zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter the code LOCKEDONNBA. Don't forget, that's code LOCKEDONNBA for $5 off your first order with DoorDash. The last game of the day for Thursday is the Blazers and the Lakers. The Lakers looking to turn this one around. They are six and a half point favorites. 229 is the total. They were shit in game one and they can't hit threes for the life of them. It was just LeBron doing LeBron things and everyone else struggling. For Portland, there's no Zach Collins again. Were well, they going to play more of that nurkic Whiteside combination? I don't trust that that's going to work long-term, but they worked in game one. And for the love of God, Frank Vogel, Get JaVale McGee all the way out of here. There's no reason for him to start. I don't, I don't give two shits that Anthony Davis doesn't want to be a center. Suck it up, big fella. You're a center. Play center. Otherwise, you guys are going to get your asses bounced. JaVale McGee should not be starting. Davis and Kuzma are your options. This is absolute stubborn bullshit. It's star pandering and Vogel fingers out of assholes. JaVale, I don't think, starts in this one. Hopefully. Or just... Is there no need for it? It's, it's, it's nonsense. It is nonsense. Anyway, point guard, Damian Lillard, $10,000. Only had 48 in game one. Oh, I'm fine with going back to Lil at that price. Uh, sorry, Damian Lillard. Alex Caruso, 3,600. Um, yeah, probably not. But I guess the big news is the big fella, Rajon Rondo, is questionable. Hopefully, they don't play him at all, but maybe they will. Maybe that'll make them go down 2-0. Who knows? But Rondo is not going to be a DFS option for us. Christian James McCollum's at 7,200. Only 25 points in 42 minutes. He's not my high-priority guy here, nor is KCP or Danny Green, who they're just not playing enough. And Gary Trent. The, you conundrum with Gary Trent. When the shots don't go in, what, what does he do? 31 minutes, 6 points. The answer is nothing. And that really limits him. He just does nothing in those other areas. He's really just a tournament player. At small forward, LeBron James. LeBron James. 10,500. Absolutely lock, lock the shit out of that. I, I'd prefer him over Harden and maybe even over Giannis as well, to be honest, at that salary. Well, Mallow at 5,500. I think he looks pretty bloody good as well. Really strong game from him in game one. And then onto your power forwards, Tone Davis at 10 forward. Despite him not playing that well, he still had 54 points. I love using him in this one as well. Some real value in the high priced guys in this game. Well, Winyan Gabriel started, didn't do anything. And then the future MVP, Kyle Kuzma. If he was at 5,000, I'd love it, but he's not. He's at 6,000 and it's too high. For center, it is time. The world. 
Hassan Whiteside's at 4,500. He played 26 minutes and had 30 points. If they're going to go back to the whiteside Nurkic combination at 4,500, he's an option, as weird as it is. I don't know how much faith I put in it, but he is a GPP option. Nurkic is at 7,700. It's good that his salary is dropping down. Now he is back in play to me. He was too high previously, while Dwight Howard and JaVale McGee, uh, they can piss off. On DraftKings, uh, Whiteside again with some value there. Davis and LeBron. Lillard's at 11, and I think that's probably a little bit too high, but I don't mind Markeith Morris as a bit of a punt guy. 3,200, he played 19 minutes. He could have 22, 23 points pretty comfortably. He's a name to watch there. Mallow's at 59, and if you want to get sexy... And by sexy, I mean crazy. Rajon Rondo is a minimum salary player. Now, he's a minimum salary player because he's a minimum NBA player. But can he, at $3,000, give you 18, 19, 20 points? Sure. I don't think that's a crazy move at 3000 bucks for Rajon Rondo. Guys, that'll do it for me today. I'll be back tomorrow. As usual, I'll be watching the NBA. I'll be watching the playoffs, as you will be as well. So don't forget to subscribe. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on YouTube. Give it a thumbs up. Chuck a comment down below, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.